Hey there, it's Jason from Codemanship uh, with another video diary entry. Uh, today's video diary is my eight tips for developer productivity. Now I've been watching a lot of videos recently with people talking about improving your productivity, uh, productivity as a developer. And I think with very few exceptions, they all make the same mistake, which is that they believe the unit of software delivery is the developer. It's not. The unit of delivery is the team. Um, so it doesn't matter how fast you type code and et cetera, et cetera. What matters is how fast teams get things done. So here are my eight tips for development team productivity. Tip number one, probably the most important of them all. Um, you need to be working as a team towards clear, testable customer goals, not delivering lists of features or working through backlogs, but actually solving customer problems or achieving customer outcomes. And you need to know what those goals are and how you will know if you're reaching them or if you're moving towards them. So work towards clear goals. Nobody cares how fast you can deliver features if you're delivering the wrong features. As Kevlin Henney and many other people have pointed out, Velocity is a vector. It doesn't just have speed, it also has direction. And arguably the direction is more important than the speed. So that's very good advice. Tip number two, you need to have a very close working relationship with your customer. Um, you need to be speaking to them every day. Those lines of communication need to be wide open so that they can ask you questions, you can ask them questions, you can get feedback from them on a very frequent basis. The harder it is to get hold of your customer, the more likely it is that you will fail to achieve the goal. Okay, tip number three, feedback loops. They need to be fast, especially that customer feedback loop. So you need to be delivering working software to them, not necessarily into production, but into some kind of environment that they can try it in for real, um, so they can give you feedback on a very frequent basis. But also think about all of those other feedback loops, like testing and all that kind of good stuff. Um, you need to make them as, as frictionless as possible, as fast as possible. So for example, if I make a change to the code and I've broken it, I want to know straight away. I don't want to wait two weeks for a testing team to tell me that I've broken it, because then the cost of fixing will be far higher, and then downstream we lose a lot more time than we think we're saving. Tip number four, this is a really, really big one. So if we define productivity as how much value the team delivers for every dollar the customer spends, then small teams tend to deliver a lot more value per dollar than large teams. And that's because of the, the, the crisscrossing network of communication that needs to go on between all the developers. And every time you add a new developer, that network of communication that's required to collaborate and coordinate increases uh, exponentially, increases factorial, as it were. Um, so eight developers will not get twice as much done as four developers, and 16 developers will probably get less done than eight developers. Um, there's a real law of diminishing returns. We tend to find the sweet spot from studies is around four to six developers um, in terms of um, value delivered for each dollar that you spend, but also the stability of the team. You know, if it's two developers, they might get more done per, per dollar than four developers. But if one of them gets hit, by, hit, gets hit by a bus, you've maybe got a big problem. And four teams, there's enough stability that you're not constantly handing over to people. You're not worrying about people leaving. But at the same time, they are getting enough done. You are getting more value for each dollar you're spending. And small teams will find it much harder to collaborate closely with the customer. They'll find uh, much easier, sorry, to collaborate closely with their customer. They'll find it much easier um, to work in those small feedback loops than larger teams because of all the bureaucracy and the overhead that larger teams tend to create. Okay, now we're talking about teams, and this is a slightly contentious one, depending on who you ask. Um, I found that it is better, it works better to stack teams towards the more experienced end of developers. And yes, managers, I know that also means probably more expensive. But remember, small teams. So I watch, I watch teams of 16 developers, 20 developers, most of whom are very inexperienced. And you've got a handful of experienced developers supervising or whatever um, but the, what actually happens is the people who would be getting a lot done that co that kernel of maybe four developers who would be getting a lot done are spending most of their time supervising and mentoring and fixing the mistakes of uh, less experienced developers developers who are really not ready to work unsupervised yet the trainees if you like that's what i'll call them the juniors the trainees the apprentices um, so if you stack the team towards the more experienced end there's enough forward momentum there, but there's still room to maybe bring in one or two other developers. I would suggest on a team of four, maybe one apprentice 
on a team of six, maybe two apprentices. Um, that's based very simply on our industry is expanding, uh, our profession, if you like, is expanding at the rate of about 10% a year. So every year we have to find 10% more developers. Um, and depending on who you ask, my opinion, many other people's opinion, it takes roughly three years to, to train up a software developer to the point where you can trust them to just get on with it by themselves. Um, so if it takes three years to train a software developer and we need 10% more of them every year, it would stand to reason that at any point in time, maybe 30%, 25, 30% of our teams would be at that less experienced end, the trainees, the apprentices, the people who need a lot more attention. Um, so stack your teams, I would suggest, sort of 70, 30 towards the more experienced end. But if they're smaller teams, they will still get quite a lot done, a lot more bang for your buck, as it were. Okay. Here's one about teams that's also very important. There's no point in having a, a team of experienced software developers and all that wonderful stuff if every decision they have to make needs to be escalated up through some kind of hierarchy. Examples include developers waiting for laptops, developers waiting for software licenses, developers having to seek permission to work in a certain way or, or add a certain dependency to their code, a library or whatever it is. And from a technical authority or from the CTO or whoever it is, or from purchasing, developers waiting for stationery. Um, all of these, what are actually very small and insignificant decisions a lot of the time. A laptop is something that we can solve that problem quite easily by just going to PC World and buying one. Give us, give us a credit card, we'll go and buy a laptop. We know what we need. Um, so decisions at that kind of level, I would say below $1,000, maybe individual developers can just be left. They can be trusted to make those decisions. Um, and maybe if it's maybe below $10,000, maybe the team can be trusted to make that decision. So give the team a credit card. Um, there are mechanisms you can put in place to manage and account for these processes and these decisions, but also hand the autonomy, the decision-making power to the people who need that answer and they need it now, or they need that laptop and they need it today and so on and so forth. When you don't do that, when it gets escalated, those managers become bottlenecks. That decision-making process becomes a bottleneck. And I've watched teams sitting around twiddling their thumbs for days, sometimes even weeks, waiting for logins, waiting for hardware, waiting for all sorts of things. So devolve decision-making power. Quite frankly, it's the only way you're going to get those fast feedback loops and all the other stuff that you want, because those tend to be very, very closely synonymous with autonomous teams, teams who are making most of their own decisions. Of course, if it's a much bigger decision, if it's a $100,000 decision, maybe it does need to go up the chain. But you need to put the decision-making power where the size of the decision warrants it. So if it's post-it notes, anybody should be able to make that decision. If it's a laptop, any developer should be able to make that decision. And if it's training, any team should be able to make that decision and so on and so forth. So autonomous teams will get a lot more done. And when it comes to getting things done... There's something else that's really, really important, something I've learned the hard way. Everything I do in software development, everything you do, everything every team does, every feature we deliver, every refactoring we do, it's an experiment. It's not guaranteed to succeed. And the essence of agility is learning from our experiments. We're experimenting as we go. So we, make, we add a feature to the software and make a change. We give that to the end users, go, what do you think? And it's 50-50, maybe it's what they need, maybe it's not. Maybe that refactoring improved the code, maybe it didn't. Um, maybe that change worked, maybe it broke the software. And in those instances, sometimes we just need to go back and we need to go back easily to something we're happy with. So we need ultimate undoability, not just, not just talking about um, version control here or continuous integration. I'm talking undoability in all of the feedback loops, the ability to undo or roll back a release, for example. The smaller and more frequent your releases are and the more aut automated they are, the, the easier it is to do. But I encourage teams to have an undo version of every do feedback loop they have. So um, undoing check-ins, undoing refactorings, undoing releases, those things are all really, really useful because sometimes experiments fail and we'd like to be able to just learn from it, go back, try something else. That's the essence of agility, the essence of iterative and evolutionary design. So you need ultimate undoability, and then you will waste a lot less time either redoing things um, or unpicking software because you delivered 100 features, but the customer's only happy with 80 of them, and so on and so forth. A, a fixing broken code when all you could do is just a git reset. What you basically need is the equivalent of git reset, 
But for all of those feedback loops, everything needs a reset. And it needs to be as slick and as, as simple and as safe as possible. And finally, and here's a big one, um, I've worked on teams in the past, and I've, I've kind of done this to myself as well, where we work very long hours, 12, 14 hour days. We've worked weekends, we've crunched, very, very synonymous with the games industry, for example. And what we learned is that we just start making more and more mistakes. And the weight of fixing those mistakes starts to vastly outweigh the extra productivity that we think we're achieving. In actual fact, developers who are rested um, and are working at a sustainable pace, that 40 hour week or whatever you can manage, tend to get a lot more done. Remember, the goal here is to achieve the outcome from our customer. So don't think in terms of how much code you're typing or how many features you're delivering. That's kind of meaningless, really, or it certainly should be meaningless to the team. What matters is how much value are we delivering, and that's all about achieving the customer's goal. And developers that are rested tend to think clearer. They tend to make less mistakes, which means that they're downstream, they've got a lot more time for adding value to the software than they would spend fixing things that didn't need to be broken, frankly. So get a good night's sleep. Drink plenty of this stuff. Um, it's not gin. Uh, you may be surprised to hear. Drink plenty of liquids. Um, you know, get regular exercise, go for a walk or whatever it is you like to do. Look after yourself, be rested, basically, and you will tend to make a lot less mistakes. And that means downstream, you'll spend a lot less time fixing things that didn't need to be broken. So much time, in fact, that you'll probably find that you go faster. Been a number of studies done that, that show quite clearly that sleep is one of the, the biggest factors in individual developer productivity. And I wouldn't be at all surprised if it was one of the biggest factors in team productivity. Are we making good decisions? Are we are we firing on all cylinders? So there you go. Let's just recap my eight tips for development team productivity. Because remember, the unit of delivery is the team, not the developer. Um, you've got to work towards clear customer goals. Don't just work through a list of features. Your customer needs to, very, needs to be very closely engaged in the whole process, all the way through, every day, many times a day. You need fast feedback loops, not just from things like automated testing, but the whole thing needs to give you fast feedback loops. So you need to be putting working software into the hands of end users on a pretty frequent basis. Small teams will give you a lot more value for every dollar you spend on them than large teams. And small teams that are stacked towards the more experienced developers, say 70-30 or 80-20, will tend to get a lot more done than large teams of less experienced developers, where most of the effort will be in actually mentoring those developers and also fixing their mistakes. So stack your teams towards experience. Ultimate undoability, the ability to roll back any process, the, the equivalent of Git reset for everything you do is really, really valuable, really valuable. And finally, get a good night's sleep, get some rest, look after yourself, because ultimately, if you're not firing on all cylinders, you'll make a lot of mistakes that you wouldn't have made otherwise. And you'll spend a lot more time fixing those mistakes than you think you're being productive in up front. So there you go. There are my eight tips for development team productivity. Um, there will be more, vid uh, more video diaries. I'm just banging the microphone there. More video diaries coming up. Um, so if you're in, enjoying the channel, subscribe and ring the bell for notifications. If you've got anything to say about these tips, I'm sure there's a few that might be a little controversial, uh, leave me a comment below um, and I will see you soon. Stay safe.